brand new season New show, new folks, new reasons New level so you know we going up Start with the old so you know we cleaning We gleaning, brand new story Got a podcast, come talk with Tori Got your feeling, new stories New podcast, come and talk with Tori Hey, y'all. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to Tori Talks Podcast so you can stay updated with everything that's going on with the podcast. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Tori Talks. I have a special guest with me today, a very special guest, (laughs) Mr. Denzel. How are you? I'm good, Tori. What's up? (laughs) Nothing much. Look, it's so hard to, to reach, not reach you, because you, you talk to me, but it's hard, <laughs> but it's hard to uh, to have a full conversation with you, so I'm so glad you're on the podcast. <laughs> I know, I mean, we practice the lights all out here, story. <laughs> so I'm going to read in your bio, and then we'll get right on into it. Y'all, prepare to be captivated by the talent and artistry of Mr. Denzel Johnson, an American actor who was born and raised in the vibrant city of New Orleans, Louisiana. His passion for acting was ignited at a young age, and at just seven years old, he landed his first lead role as Kingsley in a stage play entitled Kingsley. From that moment on, Denzel has been captivating audiences with his natural ability to bring characters to life on stage and on screen. Starting out in theater, Denzel has a wealth of experience that has given him the honor of sharing the stage with some of the most talented actors, directors, and writers in the industry. His most memorable memorable theater credits include playing Oberon in Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Jim Ed in a member of the white race and Captain Davenport in a soldier's play. Denzel's ability to immerse himself in his roles have earned him critical acclaim and a reputation as one of the most versatile actors in the industry. From films to television, commercials, voiceovers, and more, Denzel has conquered every aspect of the entertainment industry. Denzel has also guest starred on award-winning television series such as Owns Queen Sugar, CBS's NCIS New Orleans, and TNT's crime comedy drama Claws, alongside Emmy Award winner Niecy Nash. He has also made a powerful impression in the Netflix crime thriller Mindhunters, I'm sorry, CBS's The Neighborhood, NBC's Quantum Leap, and recently Showtime's Kane Mutiny Court Marshal alongside Kiefer Sutherland. Denzel's passion for acting and his dedication to perfecting his craft are evident in every role he takes on. Don't miss out on the opportunity to work with this exceptional talent. Listen. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad to know you for real, for real. I know, right? (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So how you been? I've been good. Um, of course, you know, there's a strike happening. Everyone knows. Uh, but I've been good, though, um, overall. Uh, managing, hanging in there, you know. We're still on the front lines, and uh, we're going to get get a deal soon and uh, be back at work. I'm ready to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. I understand. So... Um, here at Tory Talks, I discuss leisure, life, love, and the Lord, right? But, um, sometimes all of it is all in one episode. Sometimes we just talk about one or two things. But for this podcast episode, I want to talk about life in the Lord. Because we went to church together. We, you know, I know that you love the Lord. And I want to talk about your life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um i know i just read that you've been acting since the very tender age of seven 
and it was right then and there that you knew that this is what you wanted to do but was there anything else that came up as you grew older or yeah um so going way back uh i thought i wanted to be a um Journalist, broadcast journalist. Um, as I was growing up, um, I, I remember this. My parents would to tell stories about it all the time. But being from New Orleans, of course, we know Norman Robinson uh, was always on the news. So I would stand in front of the TV and mimic Norman Robinson. And I thought I wanted to be a broadcast journalist. Um, and uh, I was always the artsy kids. I was always into acting, always wanted to. I feel like it was always something in entertainment, being in front of camera that I wanted to do, you know, watching other black kids on TV, and I'm like, I want to do that. And uh, acting just was always there. Um, and uh, of course, we roll in Kingsley at seven, that was that, that's when that was that. Okay. Uh, that yeah, I did that. Uh, that was fun as a kid. I had to sing uh, for a lesson, uh, and I was uh, acting, and that was a cool experience. And then I just kind of started everything off. Okay. Um, now I didn't go. To, I didn't grow up in Franklin. I okay. started there at, when I was an adult. But uh-huh. I'm sure there were plays like Christmas plays and stuff like that. So you were all in a mix with that. Yeah, um, I was uh, in the drama ministry uh, at the time when we had one. Uh, and uh, Adeline uh, is her name. Um, she wrote the play Kingsley. And uh, we did that. A few other members of, of the church are still there who was in their play, Glenn, and uh, shoot, I can't call the names. But we, we did that, and that was that kind of started everything. Pastor Albert, he's still at Franklin, and so he, he was actually helping me. I was in the children's church choir. He actually was helping me with the song. Um, I think he wrote the song for the play, and so I was taking single lessons with him, and he was helping me to get on perfect pitch. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was cool. Well, look, I didn't know um, Pastor Elva Williams had them talents. I'm gonna have yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh-huh. I'm asking about that. Yeah. So, um, so I, how did I guess just like actually working in that field come for you? Uh, my. So I started. I did a lot of theater in New Orleans. Um. Did a lot of theater in New Orleans, uh, working with um, John Snyder, uh, son who did uh, Shakespeare and did some of my brain, uh, Perry Martin, um, was the director, uh, worked with Perry a couple times. So I started building my way to a lot of theater at Dillard. Um, I didn't go to Dillard, but we performed a lot at Dillard. Uh, okay. I shaped the Cultural Arts Center. Um, so I did a lot of theater around the world. Um, worked with a lot of the great people. And that kind of started off. Uh, film and television was always something I wanted to get mm-hmm. in front of, and um, theater was. And so I uh, got my agent in 20, uh, 20. But I got my Southeast agent, and uh, within two weeks uh, of signing with her, I put my first commercial, and things just kind of took off from there. I started building. Theatrical TV credits. Um, Passion was my first TV credits. Um, and I had Wallace, Cars, and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. So that kind of, that's how I started. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't hear you mention it, but were you in NOCA? I, my mom was trying to get me in NOCA every year. NOCA was always full. Uh, <laughs> but I was trying to get in NOCA, yep. Uh-huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, I say um a lot. I it's okay. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't have the um the same training that you have. Look, and I, it comes out. And look, no, trust me. I'd I be working on it too. <laughs> yeah. So I know... I also read that you do voiceovers. I think that's how I really like your voice is just so distinct. First of all, oh, thank you. And so thank when you do voiceovers, like that's Denzel. I know Denzel, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but like doing the voiceovers, um, and then in front of the camera. I guess I wasn't used to seeing you in front of the camera until I think we started doing um, visual announcements at the church. But yeah. which of the two do you prefer, or do you have a preference? 
Um, I enjoy both. Um, the uh, visual announcement section, which you're talking about, is The Avenue. Uh, I created that show, and uh, uh, Pastor Chip, alongside Pastor Chip, and we got that together, and um, I saw a Concord, actually, church that uh, Pastor Chip Ruder was at. I was like, how about we do that at Franklin? And so me and Trinice and Steve, uh, there's a bunch of people, like Juan, Miles, uh, Pam, Say on, there's a bunch of people who actually helped me make the show and uh, wanted to take off. Going at the church, loved it. So I was in front of the camera, yes, but I also was behind the camera working a lot like this, pretty much. And um, that's how that came about. Uh, voiceover, did a lot of voiceover, um, and uh, started making my way in the voiceover world. I did something for a good friend of mine called Where to Eat in New Orleans, uh, Nate, business. <laughs> Or, but I did that more so for her, and then after that, my agent was like, hey, you ought to get into it. And so my voice is somewhere in some museum in Mississippi. Uh, I voiced other things, uh, did some radio spots, uh, did something during COVID, and uh, now I have a voiceover agent out in LA, and I audition a lot in New York. So, yeah, uh, but I, I enjoy both, honestly. I really enjoy it in front of the camera, because that can make an impact with the audience. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. Um. I want you to get into character. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna set a scene for you. Okay. But I don't know the words that you're gonna say. Okay. But the scene is hot. <laughs> it's it's a hot July, in New Orleans. And I know you're young, but you're playing the role of a granddaddy. Okay. And your three grandkids, they keep going in and out your door, letting out all your air. <laughs> <laughs> and how y'all say it? And scene. No. And right. action. And action, right? What y'all doing? Hey, 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 close my door now. Y'all ain't running back and forth, letting out all my good air. Sit down some more. <laughs> So I'm gonna give you. <laughs> right. Why they say we let out all the air back in the day though? <laughs> good air too, Tori. That's that's the key. It's good air. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. That's funny. <laughs> Either you're gonna be inside or outside. Pick oh, one. Sit down now. Sit down somewhere. <laughs> if you don't wanna be inside and all your friends outside. Right, exactly. Exactly. That's funny. <laughs> um, so like I said before, you worked in the media ministry at Franklin Avenue in New Orleans. What do you miss most? I mean, of course, other than us, but what do you uh, miss most about working in media? Um, I miss being able to uh, collaborate, of course, with all everyone in the also to everyone at the church to make Sundays happen. Uh, people saw the finished product and thought we just got there and did it, but it was so much that went into making a Sunday service. Um, you know, collaborating with the music ministry with songs of this, and get their lyrics at the screen, the avenue, um, making sure we fit them in the time slot. Of course, honoring the pastors, uh, wishing that they may had a special input, a program, a presentation, or what have you, um, things to add to his sermon. Um, Lights. People don't understand that everything goes into making Sunday as far as visually, but also environmentally. Um, lights set the mood for worship um, to enhance uh, and just all kind of things. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, I had a great team of people. I love y'all. Um, I miss that. Um, and just being able to crack jokes and collaborate with y'all and control them. It, it, was, it was really, we had a really good team and, and if anything, I was that was very important for me to set the morale um, of how we move forward each and every week. Um, so yeah, I really do. Yeah, we miss yeah. you too. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, we miss you so much, we want you to come home, but- I know, at the, right? <laughs> right, but at the same time, we're just so happy for you, right. you know? Yeah. That's funny, right. <laughs> <laughs> um. What is your favorite 
Bible scripture. Do you have a favorite Bible scripture? I do. Uh, Isaiah 40. Uh, let me pull it up. I want to be more uh, Isaiah 40. 28 31. Um, I'm reading from NIV. It says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. Uh, he will not grow tired. Understand no one can pass. He gets strength to the weary and increases the power of the people. Even you grow tired. And stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will be used. They will soar only in life. They will run in that broken water. Um, that's one of my favorite scriptures um, because it just tells us to keep the faith through everything. Uh, having faith is very important, um, along with other things too, but just having that faith to know that, hey, God is going to bring me through whatever trial, tribulation, whatever situation I've been going through. Uh, but I think that's very important, uh, especially when you're going, you know, when you're at the lowest, you know, you got to trust God, you know, and that's that's. Yeah, I like that one too. I really do. Um, if you could go back 10 years, what would you tell yourself? Now, 10 years, let me try to help you remember. <laughs> I mean, you probably remember, but you wasn't in LA. Right. Uh, you probably weren't doing as many things on screen. Mm -hmm. So if you could go back to those those years, what would you tell yeah. yourself? Hmm. Be patient. I would say that. Uh, uh, we tend to want things faster than when we're ready for them. Um, I'll say that. Um, so patience, if any. You know, I thought I was ready at the time to be whatever on a TV show or whatever in life, period, you know, but as you grow, as you go through life, uh, things happen, um, you meet people, you encounter things, things happen, and it just grows you up, prepares you for the next level, the next thing God is going to give you. Um, that way you can handle it. Um, and as you get older, you understand that more, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, what God has for you is for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a firm believer in that. Oh, yeah. If you could meet anyone dead or alive, who would it be and why? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, that's hard. One person? Uh, <laughs> let's see. I would have to say, man, it's no one uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't be quiet, just like me. Um, I would say Michael Jackson. Um, musically, uh, I feel like I've had this conversation with someone the other day, but musically, Michael Jackson is so talented. Um, and I played in the band in high school, and we played a couple of songs, and his song was complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, at the time, I knew how to read music, and so just the stuff on the page, all the notes, and they transition, and they, I'm like, he's a musical genius. And then when you go back and listen to stuff with new ears, and as you, you get older, you hear stuff in the music that you didn't catch the first time, it's like, dang, Michael was like, Man, <laughs> no one admitted it, but uh, you know. Um, so I would say Michael Jackson. Uh, yeah, really, really was looking forward to his uh, his new tour. You know, at the time. Um, yeah. But, you know, oh, yeah. Now I asked that because um, maybe last, a few weeks ago um, there was a post like on Instagram, mm -hmm. and uh, they asked Jay Z or, or they asked somebody. Would you rather uh -huh. lunch with Jay Z or five hundred thousand dollars? And people, you know, people were giving their opinions, but Jay Z was yeah. like, what do you mean, fuck? Get take that money. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I saw that too. And that's a that's a hard one. 
to answer the question, I would say I'll take the money because I feel like I'm smart enough to get in touch with people to make that 500000 grow into some more money. Uh, but also, too, I think it was good to hear some wisdom from Jay-Z if you're going to take, take the dinner, but yeah, I'll take the money. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Jay-Z. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Now I want to ask you this question, and um, uh -huh. and I know you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about mm -hmm. because I'm not saying any names, and I don't want you to say any names. Okay. But there was an incident several years ago um, that you encountered uh, with mm -hmm. a celebrity figure, and I guess it was like it was shocking to you that this mm -hmm. person responded in a certain way, a negative way. Mm -hmm. Do you think mm -hmm. that incident um, hindered or discouraged you, or do you think it like it it helped you and added fuel to making mm -hmm. you, you know, continue to grow as an actor? Yeah. Um, at the time, uh, it was uh, not so much discouraging, but a, a more so maybe a little disappointing. Um, you know, because you know when you. I, People don't understand when they meet someone that you see on TV, people feel like they have a personal connection with you because just, oh, I grew up watching you all my life. And I think that's what it is. Sometimes you kind of get a little let down, you played it or whatever. Um, but disappointed originally, but it kind of fueled me some more like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to strive, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that to get to that that, that level. Um, and people do want to. Um, uh, I still admire that person for what they've accomplished and the great thing. Um, and it just makes me actually come about it. So yeah, so down the line, it, it just actually makes me work hard. Yeah. 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 And I, I asked that, I remember several years ago, I, I think I was still in high school, but I'm um, not uh -huh. sure if you know this. Well, you do know this, but I work at the Superdome in the arena for events. Uh -huh. Right. I was still in high school, and I, I met a celebrity, a different celebrity uh -huh. who we're talking about. But um, And, I mean, I treated that person like they were everybody else in line. And their response to me was, you don't know who I am? <laughs> um, I do, but how can I help you, sir? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean. Right. Yeah. I'm not the boss. I can't give you anything. <laughs> right. That's true. Right. Just I just work here. That's it. <laughs> That's above my pay grade. <laughs> you don't know. Who, yes, I know who you are, but how can I help you? Okay. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> Move right along. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But what has been your um, your biggest accomplishment thus far in your life? Hmm. Um, I would say moving to LA. Um, yeah, moving to LA. I've had some other victories and things happen here, but moving to LA was big. And I mean, and we get it because of the Anyone from New Orleans, holy gift, but I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard not to make it out of New Orleans, especially if you want to tell uh, um, which is why a lot of people migrate to Texas, you know, Houston, maybe New York, Dallas, or Atlanta, um, you know, black people in the to have a better quality of life. We know what New Orleans is about. New Orleans, New Orleans uh, no place like it. But also, too, it's like, there's a seal in New York. And uh, if you want to progress, sometimes you got to leave. And um, for me, moving to L.A. was always a thing. I, I kept saying every year, you know what? I'm going to move to L.A. I'm going to move to L.A. I'm going to get to Hollywood. I'm going to get to Hollywood. And uh, when it happened, God literally aligned everything for it to happen. And uh, I was like, oh, oh, snap. I'm getting ready to go now, like, you know, and it was cool. It was such a big thing. So that was big for a kid coming out of the door. Was that pre-COVID or during COVID? 
this was pre-COVID. I moved to LA in uh, November 2019. So okay. right before the pandemic. Right before COVID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that's why I couldn't quite remember because I was like, uh -huh. right, like during COVID, but it was right before. Yeah. Right before, uh -huh. yeah. I know, right? It was tough. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. God so how great. did that go? Um, because it's like, like the world shut down, right, during COVID. So how did that go? You're brand new to, uh, I mean, across the country. Yeah. And you're going there for acting purposes. Mm -hmm. And it shuts down. Like, how did yep. that go? That was crazy um, because uh, I moved to L.A. and everything was going, you know, well, still adjusting. But I had uh, one audition, uh, uh, which was pretty cool at Paramount Studios. So I had a chance to, after my audition, my first audition in L.A., walk around Paramount Studios a lot. And it was just so filled with so much history and it's iconic. And so I was just excited. And then probably a couple weeks later... I look on CNN and they say Disney World's closing, the NBA schedule is, is done. Like, I'm like, wait, this is getting real serious. And um, pandemic happened. Um, held on, of course. I thought about moving back home, but you know, it takes money to move. Um, and it's like, I just uprooted my entire life to come to LA. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to tough it out. And uh, toughed it out. It was tough, but thank God I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. Things have uh, totally turned around from the pandemic, for sure. Okay, and then even, okay, so you had the pandemic, mm -hmm. and now, right now, you're currently in your second, you know, like, what's going on. Uh, right, right, right. We like, like how, second... how are you keeping your sanity? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Look, it's, uh, I had this running joke, actors just want to act so bad right now, but we can't. Um and uh, with the strike, you know, that is posing a, a, a little problem, um, but it's for a good cause. That's the main thing about it. Um, uh, actors are just as much as important as the writers and the producers and the directors and all the crew members that make a movie or TV show happen. It's literally a team effort. And um, getting a fair deal is very important for what we need. And if we got to withhold work, well, that's what we'll do. Um, but we're going through our second pandemic right now. Um, if anything, living life uh, keeps my sanity. Um, you know, getting outdoors. I was at the beach just the other day, so that was refreshing just to kind of, you know, look at the beach and just think and meditate. Um, uh, driving here in L.A., you see the Hollywood sign. So for me, that's a personal constant reminder of why I'm here. Um, and so that's encouraging, um, friends, family, of course. Um, so yeah, yeah. Do you have a quote or even just a phrase that you live by? Uh, yeah. What's for you is for you. I feel like you said that earlier, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's for you is for you. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, in any arena um what god has for you can't nobody play it out that's the truth um <laughs> like nobody he will move him out the way <laughs> but i'm a firm believer it's for you it's for you and it holds true every single time yeah that's very true <laughs> um are there any special projects that you can speak of that we can look forward to with including you? Um, I, I cannot promote anything uh, right now, but uh, if the viewers listen to the bio, that's where you can find me on some of the recent things. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. Uh-huh. Um, so I always, like to prepare my guests with questions, but there's one segment that I do not prepare my guests on. Okay. The, only, the only preparation that you might have is if you listen to other episodes. Okay. And that is a segment that I call This or That. Okay. And in this segment, I give you two options and it's a rapid response. You have to pick okay. one or the other. Okay. So the first one is barefoot or slippers in the house? Slippers in the house. 
second one is LA or LA. <laughs> That's a hard one. You gave me a hard one. Um, LA, here, Los Angeles. I love it. <laughs> Third one, hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot coffee. Okay. Fourth one, um, steak or seafood? Steak. I love Wagyu. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, last one, in front of the camera or behind the camera? In front. Yeah. 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 Okay. Eventually, I'm going to work my way behind, but in front. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell the listeners before I let you go? Um, I don't have anything. You did a great job, Tori. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about a lot in a quick, quick segment. Um, yeah, no, uh, I would just say continue supporting me. Um, uh, support the actors. Um, I feel like a lot of people who are not in entertainment um, may not fully understand what's happening and totally, by all means, totally get it. Um, but what the actors are going through right now, sag after, um, we're on strike and we're on strike for good reason. Um, just support your fellow actor friends or really just understand what's happening um, because it could affect you in whatever workplace you may work in. Um, you know, striking is not easy. A lot of people are unfortunately out of work. Some people are really hurting and losing money. Um, and so if anything, speaking on that is important to me because we want to get back to work, but not at the cost of forsaking monies that may be belonging to us, uh, AI protections, that's a really big thing. You know, our likeness is very important. Um, no one wants to... I'm sure you, Tori, don't want your likeness posted somewhere without consent, and that's essentially what is happening. And so that's really important that that's protected um, for us, So along with other things. So look into that, be in touch, because uh, we want to get back to work. We want to create your favorite shows that you enjoy watching us on and the writers and all everything. So, you know, so yeah. And so you said that, and I'm, I don't watch too much TV, uh -huh. But I do watch Big Brother, and that's oh yeah, I love that show. <laughs> and it's wrapping up. But I remember, like in the beginning of this season, like you can tell yeah. that y'all on strike because it was it was hard to watch. Yeah, it's a lot of reality TV on TV right now, uh, whereas typically they would be filled with procedurals and new dramas coming out and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Reality TV is keeping us company, though. I watch a lot of it, too. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again. Where can the Thanks, people find Tori. you? Um, Instagram. Uh, uh, my IG is Denzel double underscore Johnson. Um, that's where I typically live uh, for the most part. I'm on Instagram, so people can follow me there. Okay. Well, uh -huh. thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Hi, right, Tori. We'll talk soon. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast episode. I hope and pray that you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Tori Talks wherever you listen to your podcast episodes. And if there's anything that you want to hear, any specific person that you want to see on Tori Talks, let me know. Email me, Tori.talks9 at gmail.com. And on Instagram, Tori.talks9. Bye.